this video, we shall discuss how to revalue the assets and liabilities and how to treat the profit and loss that is there in the existing balance sheet at the time of admission of a new partner. Okay, now let us assume there are two partners in a partnership firm, A and B. They are the two partners. They run the partnership firm, for example, for three years and they admit C into the partnership firm. So, whenever a new partner is admitted in the partnership firm, the existing partnership firm between A and B will be dissolved. So, theoretically, the partnership firm will be dissolved. So, if the partnership firm is dissolved, what will happen? Whatever the items that is there in the existing partnership firm, in the balance sheet of the existing partnership firm, that has go to the old partners because the new partner does not have, this new partner does not have any share of profit or loss that is there in the old partnership firm. Before he joined as a partner, whatever is the share of profit or whatever is the share of assets and liabilities that will not go to the new partner. It belongs only to the old partners. So in the balance sheet, we will have assets and liabilities. This assets and liabilities will be recorded at the historical value, it will be recorded at the cost price, isn't it? Okay, now at the time of dissolution, these assets and liabilities may not represent the current market price. The, they may not represent the current market price. So what we are going to do, we are going to revalue the asset. We are going to revalue the asset. Why are we revaluing the asset to bring it to the current market price? Am I clear? So, when revaluation of asset is done, whether it is an asset or a liability, when revaluation is done, it may result in increase in value, decrease in value or we may come across any unrecorded asset or liability. These are the three different situations we will come across when revaluation of assets and liabilities is done. Apart from that, in the balance sheet, in the liability side, we will have reserves. Apart from liabilities, we will have reserves and we will have profit and loss account. This reserves and profit and loss account should also go to the old partners in the old profit sharing ratio. So, the old partners will share the reserves and profit and loss account, the risk balance in the profit and loss account in in the old profit sharing ratio. Okay, so now, now first let's see what is the treatment for profit or loss, this profit or loss and reserves. In the balance sheet, the profit or loss and reserves will go to the old partners in the old profit sharing ratio. Okay, uh, I've given you two examples of reserve. reserve. Apart from this, any other reserve that is given in the question, general reserve, contingency reserve or any reserve that is there in the question, that should be debited. Along with that, profit and loss account will also be debited provided it is a credit balance. There is a credit balance in the profit and loss account. That will also be debit debited and it will go to the old partners. Old partners account will be credited and they will share it in the old profit sharing ratio. So, existing reserve, existing profit, if it is, has a credit balance, existing profit, all those things will be debited and it will be transferred to old partner's capital account in the old ratio. Is this clear? Okay. So, instead of having a credit balance, if the partnership firm is having a debit balance in the profit and loss account, that means they are having a loss in the partnership firm, then that debit balance means we will credit it to profit and loss account. Only when we have a credit balance, we will debit P&L account. If we have a debit balance, we will credit p and account to profit and loss account. Apart from that, if there is any deferred revenue expenditure, uh, the best example for de deferred revenue expenditure is advertisement expenses. If there is any advertisement expenditure, that will also be credited and it will be transferred to old partners capital account in the old ratio. The old partners will share the losses and will share the deferred revenue expenditure in what ratio? In the old ratio. It will be transferred to partner's capital account. Are you clear with treatment of loss, profit or loss? Okay, now let us see how to do revaluation. 
So when you revaluate, we have to revaluate both assets and liabilities. We will go one by one. First, we'll start with the asset. So when you revalue the asset, what are the three different situation I told you? There may be an increase in the asset. There may be a reduction, uh, decrease in the asset or we may come across an unrecorded asset. So when the value of asset increases or we come across unrecorded asset, it will result in what? It will result in gain. If the value of asset increases or if we come across an unrecorded asset, then it will result in gain. On the other hand, if we come across a reduction in the value of asset, then it will result in loss. Am I clear with this? So the three different situations when we revalue an asset or liability is we may come across an increase, we may come across a decrease or we may come across an unrecorded asset. If the asset value has increased or we come across an unrecorded asset, it is a gain. If there is a reduction, it is a loss. Okay. If there is a loss, what will be the entry? Revaluation account data to asset account. If there is a gain, what will be the entry? Asset account data to revaluation account. Are you clear with this? It's very easy. Having understood uh, revaluation of asset, we'll move on to revaluation of liability. In liability also, we will come across three different situations. Appreciation means increase, reduction means decrease, unrecorded liability. Okay. When there is an increase in liability or when there is unrecorded liability, then it will result in a loss. Opposite to asset. If asset increase or unrecorded asset is there, it is a gain. If there is an increase in liability or unrecorded liability, it is a loss. If there is a reduction in liability, then it will lead to gain. Are you clear with this? Okay, if there is a loss, what is the entry I told you? See here, if there is a loss, the entry is revaluation as account data to asset account. In the same way, if there is a loss, now the loss is due to what? It is due to liability. So the entry will be revaluation account data to liability account. Here again, when there is unrecorded liability, I told you it is a loss. So the entry will be revaluation account data to liability account. If there is a gain, the entry will be Liability account data to revaluation account. Are you clear with this? Okay. Now, due to this revaluation of asset and liability, we may end up with a profit on revaluation or loss on revaluation. We are recording, we are revaluating asset and liability. Due to this revaluation of asset and liability, if you prepare the ledger account of revaluation, we may end up with what? We may end up with either profit on revaluation or loss on revaluation. In the ledger account, in the revaluation ledger account, if you get your balancing figure in the debit side, then that means there is a profit on revaluation. On the other hand, if the balancing figure is on the credit side then this is called as loss on revaluation for that also we have to give a journal entry what will be the journal entry for transfer of gain on revaluation revaluation account data to old partners capital account and this profit or loss on revaluation will be shared between the old partners in the old ratio in the same way if you have loss on revaluation old partners capital account data to revaluation account and this loss also will be shared between the old partners in the old ratio. Are you clear with this journal entries? Yes. At times in question you will be asked directly to prepare ledger account. Without preparing uh, journal entry they will ask you to give only prepare only revaluation ledger account. So for preparing revaluation ledger account you don't have to by heart anything. You don't have to work out journal and then come to ledger. I will teach you simply. How to do revaluation account without journal. This revaluation account is a type of nominal account. It is a type of nominal account. What is the rule of nominal account? We will debit the account if there is any expense or losses. Debit all expenses and losses. What is the rule of what is the rule for crediting a nominal account? Credit all incomes and gains. This is the rule for crediting a nominal account. This revaluation account is a nominal account. 
So if there is a loss, we will debit it. If there is a gain, we will credit it. Is this clear? I have already told you what is loss and what is gain. See here, if the value of asset increases, if the value of asset increases and if there is any unrecorded asset, it is a gain. If it is a gain as per the rule of nominal account, we will credit it. So write by increase in value of asset or by unrecorded asset both if there is any unrecorded asset or if there is any increase in asset both will be recorded in the credit side and again when there is decrease in the value of liability that is also a gain so that will also be recorded in the credit side by decrease in the value of liability okay now if there is a decrease in the value of asset. If there is a decrease in value of asset, it is a loss. So if it is a loss, we will debit it. To decrease in value of asset and for liability, if there is increase in liability or if there is unrecorded liability, it is a loss. So to increase in liability to unrecorded liability, all these things will be written on the debit side put um put the amount in the amount column so since this is a format i'm just putting into marks in the amount column okay after recording all these things what we will do we will try to tally the account so tally the account we will tally the account and calculate the balancing figure the balancing figure may appear either on the debit side or in the credit side what did i tell you if it is in the debit side it is gain if it is in the credit side it is a loss so if it is the debit side it will be shared between the partners for example i told you there are two partners so a is capital account b is capital account if there are two partners it will be shared between a and b in what ratio in the old profit sharing ratio this is nothing but your balancing figure in the same way if you have the balancing figure in the credit side also it will be transferred to the partner's capital account if there are two partners example a and b it will be transferred to the partner's capital account in the old ratio and this is your balancing figure are you clear in preparing revaluation account so this is very simple you don't have to buy heart anything understand the logic you will be able to work out any problem so i hope you found this video useful Thank you for watching.